church, there's such a weighty presence of God in our midst this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. A very warm welcome to you if you are here for the first time. And uh, to all those who are watching us online as well, a very, very warm welcome to you. This is the fourth message on the tale of two masters, and I will highly recommend that you go back to our YouTube channel and watch the other three messages that I have ministered on the subject in order for you to make sense of what I will be sharing with you today. Amen? Uh, last week, we started our journey. In fact, we first let me just recap the first message on this series was on, on the mountain called Wealth. Oh, on decoding Satan, in fact, how God trusted him with wealth prior to his fall. Second message was on the mountain of wealth and how the temptation of Christ Jesus uh, will be the strongest at the mountain called wealth, where Satan offers Jesus the wealth and riches of this world. And from there, uh, we have been learning on the soul of man because the temptation of Christ was triune. He was tempted in the body, he was tempted in the spirit, and he was tempted in the soul. And I said to you, the temptation of the soul was of the greatest. And last week I shared with you on how the body, the soul, and the spirit is connected. And today I'll be sharing with you on the substance of soul. Are you with me? So my subject will be today on the substance of human soul. Turn your Bibles with me to the book of Job, chapter 7, verse 11. I believe this message is going to liberate somebody, and I wouldn't mind if you can go onto your phone for a moment and share a YouTube link to your social handles, wherever they are. I believe this message is going to be a deliverance for many people, those who are depressed, are anxious, are struggling. Uh, this message is going to change someone's life. Amen. So if you're watching as well, I will just encourage you to hit that share button and let this word go out some way to somebody. Job, the book of Job, chapter 7, verse 11. Bible says, Therefore I will not hold my mouth. I will speak in the trouble of my spirit. I will complain in the bitterness of my soul. This is Job. Book of Job chapter 7 verse 11. Now Job here, now Job here introduces us a very powerful dynamic connection between the body, the soul and the spirit. And he pretty much summarizes that the Whatever comes out of the mouth and what happens in the spirit of man is pretty much determined by what's lying in the soul of man. So if the soul is bitter, the mouth will complain and the spirit will be troubled. Let me repeat it. He says, therefore I will not hold my mouth I will speak in the trouble of my spirit. I will complain in the bitterness of my soul. Now, being troubled is not a sin. You all know that. Troubled spirit is not a sinful spirit. But bitterness is sin. Are you with me? Trouble is not sin. Bitterness is sin. But what's coming out of the mouth is actually the condition of the soul. So the problem is not lying in the flesh. Your flesh is just the expression of what's inside of you. Your emotions, your motives, how you react, how you perceive, how you judge things, how you see stuff, how you behave, everything. As much as it is expressed in your body through your actions, very much, it's very much the substance of your soul that is being expressed. And your spirit, the condition of your spirit 
is also very heavily dependent on your soul. Because if the soul is bitter, spirit is troubled. When the soul indulges in the iniquity and sin, as we, we learn, what happened? The life departed from the spirit. So the condition of the spirit and the condition of your flesh and emotions is very much dependent on the condition of your soul. Are you with me? So bitterness is the sin. But where does the bitterness lie? Not in the spirit. Where does the bitterness lie according to Job? In the? Hallelujah. The condition of your spirit can be heavily influenced by the condition of your soul. That's why a lot of us struggle to worship. Even though the spirit man is willing, but the soulish nature is so dominant that our mind is just wandering all over. We struggle to engage in prayer. Even though we want to, we have come to church with an expectation to meet God. But as we enter, the soulish nature is so overpowering over the spirit that the spirit remains troubled because what's inside the soul? There is this battle going on. There are many troubled spirits around you because of what's lying inside the souls of people. That's why God had to redeem the soul. That's why soul needed redemption. Because if soul can be redeemed, the spirit can be revived and the flesh can be under subjection. It's the soul that needed redemption. Because whatever happened within the soul will benefit the spirit and will benefit the flesh. When the soul is bitter, it empowers that bitterness. Because soul, what we learned last week, is made of your emotions, your willpower, your intellect. So when soul is bitter, soul will empower that bitterness with those emotions. With those actions, with that willpower, with hostility towards other, soul will empower whatever it carries inside. So your bitterness can become a playground for the demonic crowd. The soul is a playground for the activities of the demons and of God. That's why the soul needs shepherding. That's why the soul needs redemption. It's the condition of the soul that attracts the spiritual forces. Amen? Tell your neighbors a soul matter. Hallelujah. It was the sinful nature of the soul that Ask for the redemption because the Bible says in Leviticus, write down this scripture. Human soul needed atonement. Leviticus chapter 17 verse 11. Then we have, Bible says in 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 2. It's part of, part of us that is purified and protected by the truth and the work of the Holy Spirit. is the soul that God wants to protect. Jesus becomes the great shepherd by sacrificing himself. Of the souls. Hallelujah. He's the great shepherd of what? Of the souls. Bible says in Matthew chapter 11 verse 29. That we find rest for our souls. You wouldn't. There is no scripture where it says you will find rest for your flesh. Or you will find rest for your spirits. No. Because if you find rest for your soul. You will find rest for your spirits. And you will find rest for your body. You can have your room darkened and you will be wanting to sleep, but the sleep will not come because what's inside. So no matter how much you try to manipulate the environment around you, but what's inside of you will keep you up. It's a matter of the soul because whatever you carry will determine how you will live. Matthew chapter 12 Matthew chapter 12, verse 33. The Bible says in Matthew, the gospel of Matthew chapter 12, verse 33. 
either makes the good tree and its fruit good or else makes the tree corrupt and its fruit corrupt. For the tree is known by his, by his fruits. Verse 34, chapter 12 of the Gospel of Matthew, verse 34. Offsprings of vipers, how can you, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. A good man out of the good treasure of the heart brings out good things. An evil man and an evil man out of the evil treasure brings out evil things. Verse 36. But I say to you that every idle words, whatever men may speak, they shall give account of it in the day of judgment. Verse 37. For by your words you shall be justified, and by your words you shall be condemned. Whatever comes out of the mouth is because what lies in the heart. And in this context, the heart represents the emotions, the, the willpower, and the intellect of man. It, is, it, it represents the soul of man. He says, whatever is inside that what will come out of your mouth. So if the mouth is complaining, it's because the soul is is bitter. Whatever is inside. If there are challenges, you need to find out where the root is because as much as you're trying to blame everybody and the circumstances and the situations around you, the root might be lying right in your very own heart. So the problem may not be around you. The problem may be within you because how you're expressing tells me that there's something that is not right inside. It's the substance of your soul that will give an expression to your flesh. There's something inside of you that tells your spirit, be troubled. That tells your flesh, act like this. It's the soulish nature that dominates how we live. And unless that soul is subjected to Christ, it is ruled by the demonic, whether you believe it or not. There is a substance of soul, human soul. And it's a reservoir in every human, in every man, in every woman. It's called a well. A river that flows from our valleys. This, this substance of the soul is referred to as waters. Everybody say waters. In the sacred scripture. Are you ready for this? I'll be introducing you two kinds of waters. The substance in the human soul. There's a life-giving water and then you have contaminated waters. Are you with me? Get ready for this. So there is human soul. Every human soul has the reservoir according to the word of God. Because out of it the mouth speaks. These reservoirs are referred to throughout the scriptures. Sacred well, living waters, but also contaminated waters. Waters of life are mentioned in John, the gospel of John, chapter 7, verse 38. Jesus introduces this concept. John chapter 7 verse 38. Bible says, He that believeth on me, as the scriptures had said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living waters. Some of the translation says, out of his innermost parts, innermost being. What is that innermost being? That innermost being is the soul of man. So Jesus introduces this concept that there is a substance in the human soul and out of that substance the mouth speaks. And then he goes on to say that out of that substance which is the rivers of life comes out. Hallelujah, that life comes out if life is inside. So in every valley of a believer, there is a reservoir of God, which is called the rivers of living waters, and that flows out of the innermost being called the soul. Are you with me? So it means that life-giving water will flow out of the emotions. It will be felt through the actions, how they behave, how they talk, 
how they will relate to things, how they perceive certain stuff, because there is a life-giving reservoir of God in the human soul. Are you with me? Jesus speaks of this again in John chapter 4. In fact, this is where he is ministering to the Samaritan woman. And the Bible says in John chapter 4 verse 4, 14. John chapter 4 verse 14 he says, Whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. This is nothing to do with the spiritual, the, the physical thirst. It was to do more with the soul of the Samaritan woman. And he was introducing substance to her that she needed for her soul. He says, whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. The Bible says, but the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well, a river of water springing up into everlasting life. So he says, I give you something. And as you partake of that life, which I give you last week, what we learned, God breathes into man when man becomes saved. That life is revived. So we partake of that life. And the Bible says, now Jesus introduces the spiritual concept. Once you partake of that life, it comes inside of your belly, inside of your soul. And within from that soul now, that river flows out. So Jesus gives the life. And you receive that life. And it does not remain with you on that little level. Bible says it continues to grow until it becomes a river. Are you with me? So these waters that Jesus is calling, he calls them the living waters. Hallelujah. These are the waters of life. Revelation chapter 21 verse 6 speaks of these waters again. Revelation chapter 21 verse 6. The Lord says, I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. So there is living waters, waters of life that are given to who? To those who thirst. To those who are of God. To those who desire, to those who are redeemed. And these waters become rivers inside of them. And when they become rivers, they flow out of them. Are you with me? It's a difficult question, but I marvel at what comes out of us sometimes. What, what does flow out of you? That's the question. The Bible describes the Holy Spirit as, a, as, as the river of living water. And then the word of God is referred to as the water. Write down this scripture. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 26. The Bible says the washing of the water by the word. It speaks of in Ephesians chapter 5 verse 6 where it speaks of the washing of the water by the word. So the waters of God, which is the river of the living waters of the Holy Spirit. And then you have also Ephesians telling us that that water is the word of God itself. John goes on to describe these waters in John chapter 3 verse 5. Jesus answered to Nicodemus here. He says, truly, truly, I say to you, unless a man is born of the water and of the spirit. So there's a birthing that is taking place. This birthing is called into newness of life. Into ever not, an everlasting life. But now Bible says that you are born of the water and the spirit. How can you be born of the water? Are you with me? Am I, trying to make, am I making sense to you? So you have, you have birthing taking place. But that birth is birth of the water and of the spirit. Spirit we understand is the Holy Spirit. But the water here we understand is Christ himself. And then you have water referred to the word of God in Ephesians as well. So the birthing of mankind, the rebirth of a believer is not only just a concept, fancy concept. You find the word of God and the spirit of God come together. The word here is referred to Christ as well. So you have Christ himself and the Holy Spirit coming together and breathing life. So the waters are the life of God in every believer. Hallelujah. Both the Holy Spirit and the Word. Word which is the water, washing of the water by the Word. Is needed 
for that substance within you. It's something that Satan will hinder in your life is the word of God. And that's why people struggle to wake up in the church because to come to church because Satan will try his very best to keep you away. Why? Because he understands that the word is the water that the Bible refers to. Are you with me? It's life-giving. Man is born of the water and of the spirit. And the water is the word of God. And man needs that substance to be revived and have those reservoirs and wells and living waters continue to flow from him. So what he will do, he will hinder the word of God benefiting the people. So people will become so discouraged. Sometimes just so lazy even to come to the to the ministry. Why? Because Satan does not want those waters to be revived. And I have seen believers, I have seen believers, saved believers, with stagnant waters. And the stagnant waters stink. So they understand the religious logos, slogans, and, and the lingo. They will tell you, praise God, and they know how to pray, and they know how to preach, or even quote scriptures, but you can immediately smell the stench of stagnant waters. The waters haven't been moved. There's no zeal. There's no passion. There's no drive. There's no love. The waters are stagnant. We received and we remained there. We didn't, in, we didn't engage with God to grow. We didn't engage with God to partake of more and continue to have that flow in our lives. And the waters became stagnant. And stagnant waters will draw all kind of filth and insects. Are you with me? The Bible says in John chapter 6 verse 63. It is the spirit that makes a life. John chapter 6 verse 63. The flesh profits nothing. What does make a life? The spirit. You remember last week? God came and breathed into the spirit. Spirit becomes reborn. This is what the spirit makes alive. Makes alive what? Spirit makes alive the soul and the flesh. Are you with me? The words that I speak to you are spirit and are life. So the word, the, the preaching of the gospel, the ministering of the word, the word that you hear, you need it because these are not just words. These are according to the word of God, spirits. And the spirit makes what? Spirit makes alive. So if you need life, and that is an everlasting life, and that is a living flow of waters within you, you need the word of God. More than anything else. The word of God. Because the word Bible says that I speak to you. Our spirit and our life. Hallelujah. The word of God is that life giving spirit to the human soul. The word of God is the water. That human soul need. The substance that the human soul need. I'll tell you why you need the living waters. Psalm 107 verse 9. Book of Psalm 107 verse 9. These are the living waters I'm sharing with you and I'll, I'll tell you why you need those waters. Because there is a void inside of every soul because you were created to have that substance. A substance that can influence your emotions, your willpower, and how you will behave and act in every aspect of life. So that void was created when, when you were created. Hallelujah. We learned about that. The soul seeks subjection because that was the design of the soul. Listen to this now. Psalm 107 verse 9. For he satisfies the longing soul. And the hungry soul he fills with good. Are you with me? Now this tells me that there is longing in the soul of man. They are longing in every soul. And that lo those longings that are in every soul by design are both of the physical and the spiritual in nature. Are you with me? 
These longings, Psalm 107 tells us that there are longings in the human soul and God satisfies those longings. And these longings are both of the physical and the spiritual nature. The soulish longing in the natural are made of your emotional needs, your bodily needs, your intellectual needs, your relational needs. Those are the longings. So you long to be happy. And when you don't find happiness, you are miserable. You long to, to be filled when you're hungry. Are you with me? I mean, you can't find things what you, don't, don't, what you like. You are miserable. You're longing to reach somewhere in life and you want to study and do things. Those are longings. You're longing for relationships. And when there's no peace in relationships, you are miserable. Because there are longings in the soul of mankind. And those longings are of the natural nature. They are of the physical nature. And then the longings are also of the spiritual nature. Hallelujah, because by design the soul will seek a subjection. It will want to submit to a spiritual authority. We learned that last week. So it seeks spiritual authority because there are longings that are of the spiritual nature. And if you are not subjected to Christ, your soul has already subjected to some other kinds of spirits. Hallelujah. Your soul will seek purpose. Many of us are not happy and satisfied having all things because we don't feel we are fulfilled in life. We always feel this void and we feel that there is more. That longing is of the spiritual nature. Why? Because when God created Adam and Eve, their purpose was fulfilled in the very presence of God. They didn't have to look for their purpose. So there was a void created in man to have a spiritual longing where they, he will find complete satisfaction and fullness. And let me tell you, you cannot find that anywhere. Many people feel, you know what, if I get a good job, I will come right and I will be more happy. And they find a good job and they still remain miserable. Many people say, you know what, if I can find peace in my marriage, maybe I will come right. And when there's a peace in marriage, they still remain miserable. So the problem was not the job or the marriage. The problem was the soul, the condition of the soul. There were spiritual needs. And that spiritual need, that longing that I must have a purpose fulfilled life can only be satisfied in God. So as much as you're trying to fulfill that purpose in your marriage and in your job or business, it cannot be satisfied anywhere else. You need to be in the presence of God for that void to be filled because no one else can fill that void. It's a void of the spiritual nature. It is in your soul. It dictates your emotion, your life, how you behave. But that void in your life is of the spiritual nature. Nothing else can fill that. Yes. Hallelujah. Your soul is seeking purpose, but it cannot be satisfied anywhere else. As much as it has the natural needs and the physical needs, separate the two. Don't confuse the two. You're trying to fulfill a natural need by spiritual means is not going to happen. You're trying to fulfill a spiritual need by the natural means is not going to happen. Separate the two and ask God to give you wisdom so your soul can be at peace. Amen. Hallelujah. So the longing of such voids are of the spiritual origin. Some people are depressed. And feel helpless because they're trying to fill that void so desperately. But it's not going to happen by any natural means. Let me say that to you. No matter how many professionals you see, that void will remain in you. Because that void might be just of the spiritual nature. And by you just coming here and sitting or maybe listening to this word, you might get just get delivered and helped and God can just redeem your soul right now. 
But some of these words, these longings that the Bible say, they're longings in the soul of man are of the spiritual nature. Only Christ can satisfy that longing. That's why he said to the, the woman, woman in, in John chapter 4, he who drinks of this will not thirst again. It means I will satisfy you to the fullest because what you're seeking, you know the problem with that woman was? She was married five times, staying with the guy, the sixth, sixth guy. And she didn't want to tell anybody because she didn't want to, you know, embarrass herself. Jesus was the seventh man. I must preach, with you, I preach to you on the seventh man, on the story of Samaritan and Jesus. She was at the well, but there was a longing in her heart that was far too greater for that well to satisfy. That's why Jesus said to her, if you drink what I give you, you don't need to even thirst. He was referring to what was inside. Are you with me? Jesus satisfies those longings. He said that. I satisfy the longing souls. Hallelujah. Now, due to this nature of the human soul, Satan takes advantage. Let me introduce you now. Counterfeit. Waters, which are waters of iniquity of sin and death. So there is nature of the human soul we understood last week. Today I shared with you about the substance that the human soul has. And Christ gives us life in it. And those are the waters. Amen? Those are the waters inside. And they come out. Once we drink, they come out. And those are life-giving waters. They satisfy both our natural needs and our spiritual needs. Are you with me? Now, Satan, on the contrary, provides contaminated waters. Everybody say contaminated waters. Because Satan understands that there is longings in the soul of man. And let me provide a counterfeit. The soul is needing of relationships. Hallelujah. Let me provide a counterfeit relationship to mess her up even more. So he provides alternative because he understands the nature of man. Are you with me? Job chapter 15 verse 16. So they're contrary to, it's contrary to what God gives. Satan provides contaminated waters for the longing of soul. Job chapter 15 verse 16. How much more nominal and filthy is man which drinketh iniquity like water. Drinks what? Iniquity like? So we drink water that Christ gives us and Bible says those are water that are life giving. Now here Job introduces another spiritual concept of the waters that are waters of iniquity. What are these? The waters of iniquity. Man drinks these waters of iniquity because the longing in the soul of the man. So Jesus gives us life giving water in John 4. And here in Job 15, now we understand that Satan provides waters of iniquity for the soul of man. These are waters that are referred to as the waters of sin and death as well. These are demonic counterfeit waters that Satan offers. He loves to copy everything that God does. Amen? Counterfeits the water of life with the waters of iniquity. So there's two kinds of waters that are mentioned in the Bible. They exist side by side. There's waters of God and then there's waters of Satan. One gives life and the one gives death. These counterfeit waters are contaminated and these waters are reservoir of the demonic realm in the soul of man. Let me, let me go further in here. Once you start to partake of these contaminated waters to meet the longing in your soul, it can be through emotions or relationships. 
you actually nourish these waters within you. And like the rivers of God, you partake of the water, but those waters don't remain inside of you in a small portion. According to John, we learn they become river inside of you. Are you with me? So you take a sip and you take a sip. Right now you're drinking from the living waters. Why? Because the water is the word of God. You understand that? Now when Bible introduces the waters of iniquity, you partake of those waters every time you indulge with something that is not of God. Whether it's emotional, relational, sexual, physical, even of the spiritual nature. Anything that is not of God is of the devil. Are you with me? So every time you partake of it, those waters don't just remain trickles inside of you. They also become the rivers inside of you. And what do they do? They also flow out of you. Are you with me? These waters become reservoir in the human soul. And that's where some of the souls are so contaminated. You're afraid to even greet them because all will come out of them is just problems and complaints and bickering and murmuring. Have you been around that? You just, you just try to avoid because it's just so much inside. And what's inside that is just coming out. The demonic realm feeds on those waters that is inside the human soul. I'm going to give you very, very powerful, deep spiritual principles right now. Evil spirits plunder on the human soul. When we talk about how the enemy is going to take control, these are the nuggets, keys that I'm giving you now. Watch this now. So the evil spirits plunder on the human soul because these waters give access. That is inside of you. Are you with me? Turn to your Bible. Let me, let me give you this principle. Matthew chapter 12 verse 43. Matthew chapter 12 verse 43. Matthew chapter 12 verse 43. Bible says, When the unclean spirit has gone out of a man, he walks to dry places seeking rest and finds none. Then he says, I will return into my house from where I came out. And when he has come, he finds it empty, swept, and decorated. He goes and takes with him seven other spirits, more evil than himself. And they enter in and live there. And the last state of the man is worse than the first. Even so, it shall also be to this evil generation. It's amazing that the capacity the human soul has, that it can have a couple of demonic spirits inside. How big the capacity of the human soul is. Just imagine that. It can possess a legion. That's how big your soul is. That's how much it can partake of from different places. Now, there is a powerful spiritual principle hidden in there. And that spiritual principle is that demons do not like the dry places. It leaves the human soul and it goes and Bible says it seeks. It tries to seek what? It tries to seek rest in dry places and it cannot find rest and peace in dry places. Why? Because demons feed on the contaminated waters that are in the soul of man. It cannot survive in dry places. It needs waters. It needs waters to nourish, to empower, to have control. And those waters are where? In the soul of man. And that's why this demon will say, that's my house. If I'm out of it, I cannot survive. So you have this imagery the Hollywood paints all over. Demons are in dry places. Demons are not in dry places. Demons are well fed in the contaminated well that exists in the souls of mankind. More the man drinks and partakes of contaminated things, the more man makes big reservoir for these demonic forces to be fed from. And that's why all our emotions often are dictated by the carnality of the flesh. And we hurt people and we say things and we do things and we don't even have guilt for it. We don't even feel ashamed because there is contamination so big and there is so many demonic forces feeding from that contamination that it has literally affected your conscience. 
Are you with me? So the spiritual longing in the soul not only satisfy the human soul itself, it will also satisfy the spirit ram. My Good Friday message will be with you on thirsty God. When Jesus says on the cross, I'm thirsty, you will have more understanding into these things. But what you carry also satisfies God. Are you with me? There's a reservoir inside of you. And there's two kinds of reservoir. Amen? There's a substance, a river, a well in every human soul. My time is gone. My goodness. I'm not even halfway through. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> Those demonic forces come back because of these reservoirs. This is where people, even if they're not possessed by the devil, they are oppressed by the devil. They're intimidated by the devil because there's something inside and you wonder why I can't break this cycle. You can't break this cycle as long as there is a reservoir where the enemy has full access to. He will keep coming back and he will keep coming back sevenfold, much more stronger because you offer something inside of you. It nourishes the demonic. Revelation. Let's, let's, let's just go through this quickly. Revelation. And I'm, I'll finish with this. We start from here next week. Okay. We're not done with the contaminated waters. I will be going deeper into this. Into the spirit of Leviathan as well. Because the spirit of Leviathan is also a spirit of the waters. You with me? It's a spirit of the deep waters. I'll be touching on that subject next week. Let me just close with this. Chapter 13. Revelation chapter 13 verse 1. These are contaminated waters. Revelation chapter 13 verse 1. And I stood on the sand of the sea and I saw a beast coming out of the sea. Everybody say sea. Having been seven heads and ten horns. And on its horns were ten crowns. And on its head, heads were the name of blasphemy. Where was the beast coming out from in the book of Revelation? From the waters. Where he has been hiding from this deep Waters, and these are not holy waters. The abode of the demonic ram is contaminated waters of iniquity, according to Job. And these are the waters of sin and death. Bible says he comes out of these waters and he's crowned, which speaks of his power and dominance. These waters have empowered Satan. But where do they flow from? These waters flow from the human soul. And as they flow, they go into this sea, which is a contaminated sea of darkness. And it prepares and it empowers the devil himself. So the, the people in the world who are sinners and on purpose are feeding these waters, even during this Halloween, of each one of them flows. And all these rivers are going into one sea. And that one sea is preparing the devil himself much more powerful, much more stronger than the world has ever seen. The Bible says these waters adorned him. He comes out of these waters crowned with crowns and full of power. Are you with me? Mankind has given him that access to the rivers inside of them. Hallelujah. They are waters of sin and death. They nurture the demonic. The question is, and I'm going to close with this question and we start from here. I'm so sorry I took longer today. The question is, what kind of reservoir is inside of you? That's the question. And you can't have the both. You can't have the purest of water and the dirtiest of water because if you mix them, it will be dirty. Even the purest will become the dirty. Because the dirty somehow has dominance over the clean. So you can have the two well. You drink from here, you go back and you drink from the other. This clean which you have partaken of will become dirty by Monday or Tuesday. 
Are you with me? There's a reservoir inside. This is the substance of your soul. There are longings in your soul, but God can satisfy those longings, and that's why he gives us waters, living waters. And those waters are the well inside of us. Amen? Ask your neighbor, who are you feeding from those reservoirs? Rose. Reservoirs of unforgiveness, bitterness, contamination, sexuality. Because demons find no rest in dry places. They need well-watered reservoir in the human soul. And that's why they keep coming back to you. Because there's something inside of you. The trouble don't leave you no matter how much you try. Because there's something that attracts the demonic. It's a substance in the human soul. That will empower your emotions, your actions, your behaviors, your worldviews, your perception. Everything about you is determined, affected by the reservoirs that you carry. Everything is the expression of what you carry inside of you. What do you carry? Stand on your feet this morning. Put your hand on your chest and just ask the Lord to come for your help. Hallelujah. We're going to dip very deeper into this contaminated waters of the story of David as well next week. And you will hear his cry how he was drowning in these waters of death. These waters can drown you. It, it, they can take you into a place where you feel isolated and miserable and lifeless and hopeless. Because they choke the life of God out of you. They're not waters of life. They're waters of death. That's why some of us feel so lifeless. Raise your hand. Just ask the Lord that thank you for this word. Lord help me. Help us oh God to drink from the rivers. Lord there are longings in our soul. But we thank you. If you have placed those longings, only you can satisfy. Whether they are the natural and the physical nature or of the spiritual. God, I pray, help us today. I pray that you help our people, oh God. Help my people. I pray in the mighty name of Jesus Christ that you liberate us, set us free, God. Lord, that you revive the living waters within us, God, I pray. Let the waters and the rivers within us not be stagnant. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we drink from the river. We drink from your presence more and more and more. Deliver our people from depression. Deliver our people from anxiety, God. Dry up these wells of contaminated and waters of iniquity and death in the name of Jesus. So when the demons come, oh God, they find nothing to drink from in Jesus' mighty name. No more demonic oppression and possession and intimidation of God in Jesus' mighty name. We thank you, Father. We thank you. Break every cycle. Break every cycle of bondage. Break every cycle of longing that hasn't been satisfied. Lord, I pray, break such cycles in Jesus' mighty name. Peace. Peace. Peace, 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 peace. Rerbo shalakase. We thank you. We thank you, Father, that the substance within us that empowers our emotion, our willpower, our intellect, belongs to you. Hallelujah. We give you glory to in Jesus' name, amen. Come on, give God some praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father.